guys, welcome back to Path of the Valkyrie, and we have a special event going on this weekend. Um, actually, two, um, which is very exciting. I think there's because it's the three-year anniversary of Romance Club, and they left this cute little message, which is adorable. I can go ahead and read that. Um, I can't believe it's been three years. I really can't, because I, I was definitely here at the beginning playing Cells in the Fog. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. But for right now... For me, it just started, um, like, just a few few minutes ago, maybe 40 minutes ago or so, um, there's a diamond rush, and all the diamond options are free. So, I figured if we're gonna go ahead and play the story that we hadn't played before, uh, play some episodes we haven't played before, we might as well get all our diamond options free, because that is awesome. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next. What I want to do next. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not certain. And then there's going to be a tea party day on, I think, approximately Sunday or so. I don't know. But for right now, um, let's go through, probably in fantasy. Yep, yeah, Path of the Valkyrie. We're going to play some Path of the Valkyrie. Last time we got struck by something that uh, Odin hit towards us, whatever, and we ended up in some random place. So we're gonna go ahead and pop in here. It says, how do you find the way out of the ice world? All right, so let's get started. Um, this is gonna be good with no very free gems. That's very, very exciting. Oh, and if you look behind me, there's a bunch of boxes. Let me sort the slide this way so you can take a peek at all those boxes over there. Yeah, my baby shower is tomorrow. <laughs> Because I have like a month left. I'm about ready to pop. Um, this baby is coming very quickly. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm having a virtual baby shower tomorrow. So all that's there to open on screen. And I was trying to figure that out today with my sister. But that's a whole thing. In other case, back to the story. <laughs> Feasting in the Veil of the Fallen. Constant worrying. Shepard depicts the use of medicinal substances and illicit activities. Ah, people doing drugs. Okay. Melody exhaled in disbelief. A small cloud of steam escaped her mouth and dispersed in a burning cold air. Cliffs of ice shone in the light of a sky-wide aurora. Melody could have sworn there was a giant head laying among them. Someone's trail snaked among the cliffs. She trembled, either with the cold or with the alienness of the place. How did I get here? I forgot this what I, was, what I was wearing. And where are the others? A gust of wind mercilessly threw a handful of snowflakes at her face. Melody felt herself starting to panic. Oh, come on. The ring on her finger was scaldingly cold. This is unfair. A tear ran down her cheek and froze in its tracks. Oh. The rage vanished as quickly as it came, leaving only bitterness. Path of change. I must do something. Like, right the fuck now. No way I'm dying a stupid death like this. Frozen in the middle of nowhere? I must find some sort of shelter. She tried to find something, anything, a note in her surroundings. A string of tracks caught her attention. Foot tracks? Or was something dragged through? I follow the trail, even if it's someone hostile. She hefted at her sword. I hope Leo's lessons will be enough. It was not an easy trek. Deep, fluffy snow hit the smooth uh, surface of a glacier. She fought for her balance. I'll find shelter and then I'll think about my next step. I just have to make it. Melody slipped and fell. She made herself rise again. She had to fight for every step. At some point, she stopped feeling her feet. The numbness climbed up along her legs. Her thoughts started to whirl and her vision blurred as if a gauze veil had been drawn over her eyes. Melody fell face first into the snow and struggled uselessly, trying to rise again. The last thing she heard was the ice crunching under someone's heavy steps. Hopefully it's a friendo. I see a bed, so. Something heavy and warm pressed her down. Is it a body or a fur blanket? She lay on her back and her skin burned and itched everywhere. Burned and itched. She glanced sideways. 
There were walls hewn out of ice and stone-carved, fur-covered furniture. Melody noticed a weird movement around her chest, as if someone ran a hand over her body. Something large and definitely alive lay on top of her. Maybe it's an animal. She started and found herself staring at a surprised feline muzzle. <laughs> the cat's pupils dilated at her movement. Oh. Um. Hello? Hey. The word came out quiet and hoarse. The kitty is curious. The cat cocked his ears, interested. A young female voice came from somewhere to her side. My lady is awake. Oh my gosh, this girl is adorable. It couldn't have been her who carried us through the snow. They said the footsteps were heavy. She stepped close. Uh, stepped close. She stepped close and wrapped an arm around the cat's neck. Melody appeared at the girl's face. She saw no hostility, only curiosity. The girl held a bundle under her other arm. Good job, Icicle. You may leave. Icicle? The cat sighed and jumped off. Breathing suddenly took a lot less effort. The girl laid the bundle near the bed and smiled. I am Mzol, daughter of Snare the Jotan, my lady. Welcome to Jotunheim. Jotunheim. I don't, I don't think I pronounced a J. I've, I've heard that word before, Jodenheim. I think it's, I think it's like that, not with, not with a J. So her name is Mjol? Mjol? I'm gonna go with that for now. Daughter of Snare. I'm still gonna call her Snare. Snare, Snare. The, the Jotun. I'm gonna go with the J's being pronounced as wise. Mjol. Mjol. Jotunheim. Jotun. Okay. That's gonna be my philosophy. I'm sticking to it for now. I should probably introduce myself. I'm Melody of Midgard. A shadow of surprise flitted across uh, Mjol's face, disappearing as rapidly as it came. My father wished to speak with you, Melody of Midgard. It has been some time since we've entertained guests from outside Jodenheim. Mjol? Um... How did I get here? How long have I been here? How long? Two nights. Weird. They still haven't found me? I'm so glad my lady woke up. The veil of the fallen is cruel to those unprepared for her eyes. I brought my lady some clothes. Are they going to be free? <laughs> she gestured towards the bundle and nodded to herself. I shall tell father that my lady awoke. Wait, but the girl already disappeared behind an icy partition. Well, I'm alive, so that's something. She rose on her elbows. She barely managed, her entire body hurt, and she proved to be wrapped in layer upon layer of fabrics and furs. Melody pulled an arm out of the cocoon. The bundle contained, indeed, clothes. <laughs> Free clothes. <laughs> All right, let's check out what we got. Good grief. Hmm. Let's go ahead and be fluffy. She also found several hairpins and combs. Looks like Mule is very thorough. Ha ha. Long bob. Combed with braids. Mmm. Pixie. Nah, 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 nah. It's interesting. Despite the ice walls, the room was pleasantly warm. She fidgeted with her hair and went to the pain in her hand. The skin around the ring still held a bluish tinge. Mule didn't mention anyone looking for me or having come for me. Does that mean they're not looking for me and I'm on my own? 
And who's going to find me? My friends or my enemies? Hmm. I wonder what happened. I wonder how easy it is to travel in between the different realms. She felt like she was, once again, standing in the middle of the burning Jerkinar. Ola tried to stop Leo from rushing Thor. I wonder why. He didn't think she'd win? I still don't know how I got here. It wasn't Odin's spear that transported me, was it? The sound of heavy steps tore her from her thoughts. A massive man entered the room. Mjol st standing at his side was completely dwarfed. Melody had to look up to meet the gaze of his dark eyes. The giant smiled ever so slightly. Hello, Santa. Okay, sorry. It's my husband calling. Uh, so he said, "Well, the Melody of Midgard." He spoke naturally in a deep, resonant voice. Okay, I don't remember if I got a picture, so let's get one because he's cool. Marked by Odin, bearing Loki's ring, frozen in snow, and wielding a sword forged by Leo the Valkyrie. If I'm wearing Loki's ring, why is it burning? That makes me very concerned for Loki. What should we do with you? Is he suspecting me or something? Or did I anger him somehow? Um... I mean no harm? Not that I could have done anything in my current state. That's good. I'd have one more, one more sculpture for my ice garden otherwise. Mjol laughed softly. Father, don't scare a lady. Come down, my snowflake. I can't be that intimidating. Dude. You need something from me? Sn a uh, snare, 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 smiled mysteriously in response. I want to show you something. Can you walk? I can. Oh, uh, I wonder what happened that he turned these people into sculptures. The statues glittered and sparkled, encircled by walls of ice. They look alive. They went on and on, uncountable, disappearing into the distance. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? Uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Um, the Witch's Castle, right? She froze all those people? Here and there, she could see gaps, dark, empty stone plinths. Snare uh, led her to the center. You're here, and it means that change is on its way. I'm on the path of change. Can order tame it? That is the question. The rune knower's game is going long, and he might even lose this time. Rune knower? Eh? He stopped and looked at her seriously. Soon, the fate of the nine worlds will be decided. Who brought you here, Melody of Midgard? I don't know. She shrugged. I just found myself here. I don't think coming here was easy. The mark on your hand is shining. Its power is now yours. So Odin gave me a mark, but somehow the power is mine? What power? I cannot talk about it. It is forbidden. Why? That is a question for the rune knower. Why can't anyone here talk straight? The gates shook with mighty blows, sending a rolling echo among the statues. What now? The gates buckled under another strike. Silence fell. Snare waved a hand and the gates flew open. Amidst the raging snowstorm stood Thor. Hammer raised for another knock. Are we ready for battle, guys? Because uh, in this story, Thor is not our friend. Freak stood near him, holding the end of a chain that stretched to the hands of four prisoners. Oh no. Ul caught her gaze and the crease between his eyebrows disappeared. He looked relieved for a moment, but the archer quickly regained composure and looked unperturbed. They mentioned him specifically. 
I wonder. Was he that worried about me? Venatus uh, stood a little to the side. A little to the side? What is she doing here? She knows another figure swaddled in a carmine cloak. And who's the jack in a cloak? Snare stepped forward and crossed his hands. Thor, I didn't think you'd come here after murdering my son. Might have an ally. How powerful is he versus Thor, though? You have something I want. And you are holding my beloved aunt hostage. Still, you come to my house. Who, who's your aunt? Venatus? Venatus? Leo? I don't know. Ha ha! Nephew, what's with the tongue wagging? Okay, I'm just, I'm trying to get accustomed to her new look. I hadn't seen it before, like not like in game or anything like that. Give me an ax and I'll handle him, if you can't. Auntie, please settle down. Anyhow, Thor, I'm not giving you back your goats. That was your wear guild for Thori. I'm here for the Bounds Breaker. A chill ran down her spine. Bounds Breaker? That's not a matter to be discussed on the threshold. Come on in. Whose side are you on? An ice hewn hall refracted and reflected the bright light of enchanted lanterns. Handmaids deftly wove their way around stone tables and benches, putting down food and goblets. Snare? Is there a need for this? Can we not have a feast, you ask? I haven't seen Auntie in ages. So you want us all to feast together? Of course. You are all my guests, so they'll be sitting at the table, same as you, free of their chains. I'm not sitting at the same table with Loki. Are you willing to insult my hospitality? What say you, Freer? The jack in the cloak lowered his hood. Why don't we humor our host? The winches are pretty, the table is lavish. I don't like him. He looks like a pansy. <laughs> I'm sorry. He looks like a pansy. He opened his mouth. Confirmed he was a pansy. <laughs> no, I gotta stop. Frick frowned but did not press the point. She took a key from her belt, touched to the chain, and the links vanished. I wonder what else can her keys do? Melody shook her head and decided to join a more agreeable, if haggard, company. Frigg watched her with an intense stare. Um. I'm curious why she wasn't in chains. Is that Does that mean she's in league with them because she's mad at Loki? She decided to turn her back on Cigar? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. They sat on a bench, intently discussing something. Am I interrupting? Have a seat, Valkyrie. Leo shuffled aside, making room on the bench. If it wasn't dishonorable, I'd just stick a knife in his back and be done with it. <laughs> I'm afraid that won't work on Stepfather, dearest. Stepfather? Stepfather. I have so many questions. Like how they all relate it. <laughs> um, who do you want to kill so bad? Thor, of course. She stared daggers at him. Thor's your stepfather? To our mutual discontent. Wait, he's your stepfather too? <sighs> There's so many family relations, I'm very confused. <laughs> And then she's the aunt of the snare guy. And for some reason, Thor and Frigg listen to him when he said he wants to eat food. So I would say he's on comparable level with them. Um, there's a lot to unpack. There's, there's a lot of lore. I feel like, 
I feel like I need notes or something. I don't. I don't know. I feel like. Goodness. This is a lot, guys. Okay, hold on. Thor is Leod and Ul's stepfather. So are they siblings? Who knows? Didn't seem like it. Um, but also Leod is Snares, Snares aunt. Okay. And we know that Loki and Thor are brothers. He frowned slightly and turned to Leod. I just don't get it. What's your quarrel with him? He did pay the wear guilt for Thori. What's your quarrel with him? He just chained you guys up. I don't... Two mangy, mangy goats for the life of the wayward son of my nephew? Yeah, right. The fact that he killed Thrud doesn't bother you at all? I think she was trying to protect Thori. And he hit her by accident. At least, that's what he told Mom. I can't believe Sif didn't strangle him with that golden hair of hers. Lady Sif? Wait. These kids, maybe. Mom just decided to leave him. He sighed and put down his goblet. You should let go of the past, Leo. I know Thread was your friend, but still... Leo gave Orl a strange look. Maybe one day I'll do just that. She looks so interesting. I don't know. I'm trying to decide how I feel about it. <clears throat> It'll grow on me. She glanced at Melody. But the forgive and forget thing is not in my blood. The urge to wrap his entrails around my axe won't just go away. Now you know a bit more. Leo's smile was downright disturbing. Orl shook his head. I'm glad you're okay, Melody. Yeah, so am I. Loki waved them a hand under the cover of a nearby table and wiggled his eyebrows. Oh my goodness. I have a plan. Of course, they looked amazingly suspicious sitting together at this table like that. Freak lazily watched them over the rim of her goblet. Snare tried to best best to engage Thor in conversation, but the seer didn't listen and darkly drank pint after pint of beer from an enormous tankard. Um, Fre Freyr eyed every single handmaid that passed him. Your last plan landed us here, Loki. Now that's unfair. Melody got here way before we did and definitely without any input from me. I wish I knew how that happened. So do I. I saw a Gungnir fly right at you, and you should be dead, Melody. I'm glad you're not. I like that. <laughs> after you disappeared, he hesitated. Right, what happened after I vanished? Yeah, tell me. And it's free! <laughs> Maybe I'll learn something from his retelling. Melody smiled faintly. But even if he tells me nothing new, I'll enjoy hearing him tell me a story. The flirting is going down. You could have asked me, love. Lucky, Thor gave you a ride on Mjolnir almost all the way to Van Vanitas' hall. What could you possibly tell? Lucky harumped as if his feelings were hurt. Listen, then, Valkyrie. Ola's well, glad you asked. You now see through his eyes. Ooh. Melody! He knew that Odin's spear always struck true. And he knew that no mortal would survive the blow. Even mighty uh, Jotnar fell to Gungnir's sting. Who's Jotnar? He reached to her in a desperate attempt to prevent... I'm too late. A bright flash blinded him for a moment. Ul opened his eyes, fearing to see Melody's body, but it wasn't there. How? Gungnir hung in the air, rotating around an invisible point, and it disappeared. The archer let an arrow fly, not even looking, and the growler abruptly ended. You're wasting my time. 
She gestured, summoning even more of the guard wolves. Ha! That's it. He ducked under the giantess's blow and caught her axe by the haft. Enough games. Go to hell. Leo's fist uh, struck him in the jaw. Thor's head whipped back, but he didn't even flinch. Yeah, she's not getting far like that. Ooh. The archer got distracted by Leo's fight for a second, but it was enough for Frigg to get him. A thin line stretched from her finger and tangled Ol and Sagar's hands and became a chain. Odin's guard wolves surrounded them. Frigg, you're making a mistake. You want to talk of mistakes, Sagar. Thor yanked the axe out of Leo's hand and pressed the edge to her neck. Don't do anything stupid. He looked around and lifted an eyebrow. Where's the balance breaker? He dragged the still struggling Leo towards Frigg. The chain bound the giantess, giantess as well. I heard Gungnir, but I see neither it nor the body. Let's see if I can get him to talk. He wasn't looking forward to the conversation with his stepfather, but understanding the situation seemed more important. Of course, I'm not as wily as Loki, but I can handle Thor. So, Odin... Wanted to kill her, didn't tell you anything. Is that upset? Uh, ooh, I don't know the right words to say to get info. Is that upset? What has the Valkyrie done to upset him? Thor looked at Oral surprised. A Valkyrie? I wouldn't have guessed. Looks like I've outwitted myself. Oh no. I should start over. Thor is slightly interested. What does that mean? I can't tell if I would have done. Thor approached the spot where Melody stood and touched the ground. Strange. Frigg rolled her shoulders, displeased. You must go. The longer you tear, the more chances Loki gets to escape. An uncharacteristically quiet Loki lay in the grass at the edge of the lake, Mjolnir pressing him into the soil. Freyr stood above him. That was a good blow, Thor. He's still out cold. Thor picked up Mjolnir. He lives. The Allfather will be pleased. Well, since we're done here, can we go already? The balance breaker escaped. We'll have to make a detour. Had you fought with us, we'd have finished faster. You know, fighting upsets me. He pulled a bundle out of a, out of a purse on his belt, set it on the water, and whispered something. The bundle opened, transforming into a beautiful ship. Did they bring Freyr along just because of the skip 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 blot near? The ship can run along both water and land, but how did they find us? Then we boarded Skip Bland near, and Thor politely asked where you were. Yeah, he can be persuasive. Loki cast an annoyed glance at Thor. But how did you know where to find me? Well, you do still wear my ring. It's strange that Thor noticed that. And why did you give me the ring? I, I forget if it was for a reason or not. He didn't. He kept hitting me until I solved his problem for him. How original. Loki had it coming. How did Vanitas come to join you? She walked out of the forest, must have heard us inside to check. Thor didn't pause to sort anything out. Melody thought for a moment. That does make the situation clearer, but doesn't answer my main question. You now know what happened to the others after your disappearance. Does anyone have a theory on why I got transported here? Loki shrugged. What's the use of worrying about it? Because it fucking matters, Loki! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> He's suspiciously not curious right now. I want to control this to keep living. Control this? Is that like change? Yeah. I don't even know why I got here specifically to this Jotunheim and what caused it or who did. Leo nodded to her thoughts. 
Gungnir has nothing to do with it. You think? I never could do anything like that. I might have learned a new trick. I think it was one of them. He nodded lightly towards Thor and Frigg. You were there, Sagar. It didn't look like everything was going according to plan. Yeah, it doesn't add up. All right, maybe it wasn't their plan. Loki apparently dozing off pricked his ears at this. Right, plan. Finally, you're back on track. Sagar rolled his eyes. Escaping is not a problem. Getting back on Yggdrasil, however, is. Then we must leave the same way we got here. Through the gate? I think he means the skid blend near. It may have blood, it might work. So we've got to steal Freyr's favorite toy. It's not happening. In case you missed it, there's Thor and Frigg here too. We'll distract them. I can make a teeny tinsy fire. Loki, if you mess up my nephew's hall, I'll make a horn out of your spine. Okay, okay, she's. I'll have to do it the old fashioned way. His face split in a triumphant anticipatory glance. Maybe we don't have to escape. You'll share with the rest of us. We don't have to? Uh, no. Dude, we gotta get out of here. But how did they find us in the first place? And can't they just find us again? If I'm wearing Odin's mark, isn't that like a tracker? Just like Loki's ring? So I know where I go with them. And aren't they in danger? I mean, how'd they know I was here? Oh, what? The Loki's ring. That's right. Never mind, never mind, never mind. But then why did he need that if the if Odin's mark was a tracker? <sighs> so many mysteries. Of course I will. He looked around the hall, assessing the environment. I can't imagine what we can do. They took my weapons. Frigg is constantly watching us. We can only hope that Thor will get drunk. Don't count on it. I know how we'll distract them. Ul Ul will hand handle Thor. Uh, how exactly? I don't care as long as he keeps drinking. Sigir, you do have some sleep herb tincture, don't you? You want to spike Thor's drink? The doshas could be tricky. Then whisper over the vial or something. Make it work. He turned to Leod. You will talk to Frigg. That would be weird. We're not on speaking terms. Oh, just ask her anything. You know how uptight she gets about it not answering. Get her annoyed enough and she stops noticing anything around her. Oh, do you want to switch places with me? No, no, then the plan won't work. I need those two occupied while I play dice with Fair. Freyr. Do you think he'll agree to play with you? Loki smiled mischievously. I have a bet he won't be able to refuse. He won't bet, Skip Latinair. That's fine. I need him distracted so he doesn't notice one of you lifting the ship out of his purse. That only leaves me. Is this really the best plan? Improve. Ul, Ul and Leod aren't happy with Loki's plan, and I can see why. Leod and Thor are a recipe for trouble. She'll pick a fight with him. This will attract attention, yes, but it will also anger Frigg. Who can replace them? So what do you propose, love? What if Sigar distracts Thor and Vanitas takes Frigg? So she's still on our side. Okay, so she was for, kind of forced to come too, just not in chains. Vanitas? She didn't even want to take part in our little conspiracy. That's because you broke her life, Loki. In case it passed you by, there's such a thing as responsibility? I keep missing that fact. Yeah, I noticed. Melody, I like your plan better. Ola nodded in his assent. Then we need to convince Vanitas to talk to Frigg. I can ask her, but I don't know if she'll agree. Well, we didn't piss her off like we, um... We replayed that, so we didn't piss her off like we did last time. So we're on a slightly better standing than we were before. Sigar thought for a moment. I don't want her to come to harm, but otherwise we'll fall into Odin's hands. He sighed heavily. Maybe you'll just ask her instead of wondering? The veneer nodded and rose from the bench. This time you're right. Sagar took two vials out of his bag and stared intently at them. Barely visible sparks glimmered inside the vials. Here. He handed one of the vials to Melody. 
Why do I need it? Insurance. If I can't pour mine into Thor's cup, you can do it instead. Plans tend to go wrong. Having an extra won't hurt. Which means we're definitely gonna need it. Why not give it to Loki then? Loki has a very interesting effect on people. They tend to watch their drinks very closely when he's nearby. Enchanted brew. Fancy. The glass was murky and slightly rough to the touch. Be careful not to break it. Uh oh. Loki sauntered up to Freyr and sat across from him. How about a game of dice? Let's go. He rose from the table as if to stretch. Frigg's gaze trailed him and she crossed her arms, but Vanadis distracted her. Sigar circled the hall a few times, traded some words with Snare, and sat close to Thor. Melody waited a couple of minutes and sidled closer to them, pretending to examine the icy ornaments on the walls. Need something? I'm just sick of Loki. I think he won't come close to you. Thor scoffed and made an inviting gesture. So wonder you haven't composed at him yet. Sigar shrugged and shifted to sit across from Thor. I'm afraid my violence wouldn't survive that. Why are you even dirtying your hands with him? The Allfather spared you last time, but... Sigar poured himself some beer and sipped from the tankard, masking his anger as pensiveness. You know, like, why the fuck would you even bring that up with a smile? If that's something like... Thor's a... <laughs> Thor's an ass. <laughs> Old debts. They started an unintelligible conversation. She got the impression that they were comparing who knew more weird names than the other. <laughs> who are all those people? If they're people. Thor drank and drank. Melody noticed Cigar starting to get into his cups. What about Sif? Left. He poured himself another tankard. I thought everything was fine between you two. Melody noticed a vile glint in his hand. Will he manage? I'll help him however I can. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I already kind of want to replay the episode anyway. But I messed up. Melody, step closer. What's with the hammer? You have strange questions, the balance breaker. He won't have enough time to pour it out. I have to buy him some time. Strange, but earnest. All right, sit down for a spell. I'll tell you about Mjolnir. Where were we? He turned and saw the hand with the vow hanging over his drink. Why you? You've been discovered. Start over. Okay. Drop a picture. The sound will distract him. Sleeping on the table and as if by accident swept the picture to the floor. It rolled and fell, shattering the pieces. Thor glanced at her frown and started turning back. Damn it. She wants to do something, anything. But he already noticed the hand over with the vial of his tankard. Okay, so I have to throw it? Interesting. Couldn't help. Try again. Okay. So when I do this again, I know that's what would go up first. Thor reached for a picture, losing sight of his tankard. Muddy uncorked the vial and carefully poured it in his contents. Not a drop was spilled. She quickly palmed the vial. Thor leaned to the table and rested his head, head in his hands. He was snoring loudly in a couple of minutes. You don't put Thor to sleep. Well, everything is going according to plan, for now. So looked around, Loki and Fre Freyr were kept playing, and judging by their faces, Luck favored Freyr. After Loki is trying to reel him in closer, something went horribly wrong. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I don't know how close we are to ended the episode. I'm concerned I've made weird choices. Um. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to keep going. Because even if I've made weird choices that I want to fix later, with the free teacup coming, uh, event coming up, I can just replay all this. Um with free teacups. So that's fine. I can fix that. Okay. So I think we should just keep, keep charging along and I'll fix any mistakes that I've made <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> okay. That's the plan. Horribly wrong. Quick work. 
Cigar remained seated near Thor, looking into the distance. Vanus was still talking with Frigg. Leo was discussing something with Snare, and Ulr was watching the game. He looked very eager to join in. Frigg paused in the midst of her conversation. She noticed Thor sleeping and frowned. Vanus cast a quick glance at Melody. Looks like she's having a hard time. What went wrong, I wonder? Melody made a few steps towards them. I don't know much about Frigg, but I might be able to help. She walked up to them, nodded in greeting, and sat nearby. Sorry for interrupting your conversation. I've been meaning to ask you. Frigg about... My fate? It won't be weird. Anyone in my place would have asked the same thing. What will happen to me next? Frigg gave her a dispassionate glance. What must happen will. She frowned and rose from the bridge. Okay. Herself? Rose talking with themselves. It must work. Venice gave her a slight grateful nod. Frigg, it's a weird question, but what feathers are those on your dress? A faint surprise smile uh, graced Frigg's face. Is this something I haven't been asked before? Did I just mess up? I understand. I use a good accent with the fates of people and nations. Well, then stop ruining people's lives, and maybe you wouldn't have to worry about that? She just feathers sewn to her outfit. These are white heron feathers. They're beautiful. Frick nodded. Baldur, my dear boy, brought them to me when he was very little. Baldur? Freak. I'm gonna write this down. Baldur's mother. When he was very little, he said they looked like clouds. That's sweet. You managed to distract Freak. It is. He's the sweetest boy in all the nine realms. Venus stepped away from the table, but Freak didn't notice. She talked and talked about her children, about braggy stories that she loves to listen to, and that her hall, Fincelier, gets so damp sometimes that it feels like you're living in a cloud. It feels like she was silent for a hundred years at least. So are we like to look at these gods as more of antagonists, um, more than just like straight up enemies? Loki leaned over the table next to her. Melody started surprised. What's up with him? I'm so bad at dice today. Could you bring a bit of luck to the table? She glanced at Frigg, unsure. She knows that something's wrong if I leave her? Come on. Freya has been betting my breeches. Freya gave them a gracious nod. Thank you for the conversation, Melody. She remained sitting on the bench, ancient and alone. What are you doing? Stop hissing. The deed is done. Who would have thought, uh, who would have thought Ul had such quick fingers? Do you think Freya will notice us up and leaving our wall at once? Snare walked up to them and smiled. Don't worry about that, Melody of Midgard. He has exceptional hearing. It is my duty as a host to entertain my guests. I'm curious about why he's helping. Should I just say thank you though? Let's see what this does. For saving me and helping now, I accept your gratitude. May your path give you what you seek. I wonder what the other option did. They left the hall one by one. Vanus was the last one to exit. She decided to come with us? Snow danced in intricate patterns behind them. Leo grinned viciously as she cradled the axe that mules uh, steadily passed her on the way out. We're lucky. Please don't let that change. Ul took a, a bundle out of his pocket. Is that the ship? You'll see, love. Okay. So we're gonna stick with whatever we done for now. We managed to get some points. Don't know if we did everything the way that we wanted to exactly, but I think we did okay. Let's get some more diamonds. All right, okay. So we're back again. I apologize. I took a really long break. I ate dinner. Uh, I we watched the season finale of uh, WandaVision and okay. 
time to get back to focus. Um, this will probably be come out a little bit later than I planned. That's fine. Midgard is on the horizon. Okay, so we stole a ship. Um, we did that. And we're trying to get out of here, but like I feel like it's definitely not gonna go as smoothly as we planned, for sure. Nothing ever does, especially not with Loki. Good grief. The Serpent of Midgard. Ooh. They sailed across the icy wasteland for several hours before Skidblanir touched the surface of a sea, northern and dark. Ul stopped warily, eyeing the distance, and even Sigar slightly relaxed his shoulders. Leo kept honing her axe with a bloodthirsty smile, completely lost in thought. Vanity stood a bit to the side, silently tugging at the hem of her dress. I think it's weird how they've been talking about her, but they haven't showed her at all. That's kind of strange. Sorry. I'm, I know, I'm texting. It's, it's important. It's really important. <laughs> Still playing the freaking baby shower. Like, it's like last minute details. Sorry. Um... <laughs> Looks like our escape was a success after all. The question now is how fast they'll catch up to us. She shook her head in thought and sat down on the sc scrubbed boards of the deck. What now? Yeah, we should pick a destination. You don't know where we're going? Archer smiled shyly. For now, we're going general, general away from Thor direction. Leo lifted her head up from the axe and scoffed. Right, it's not like your arrows can do much against his hammer. Loki slowed her down from his perch on a barrel. It's not like your axe has done him lots of harm either. Want me to test it on you? There you go, all flamey and stuff. I love it when your hair does that. He looked at his palms in a placating gesture. Leo scoffed again, still annoyed, and went back to honing her, honing her axe. You know what's good? Mjolnir can't reach us here. And we can go anywhere on Skid Blamir. Vanner suddenly looked interested, listening in on the conversation. Anywhere? Exactly. We'll be at Mimir's before you know it. Wait, we better get to Midgard first. He gave Melody a quick glance and smiled slightly. Let's get Melody home. Path of change. Of course I want to go home, but... It's a weird feeling, like a movie is being cut off at the most interesting moment. Um, you want to be rid of me, or what about your questions? Um, the mirror and the whole journey and, oh, don't worry, love. We can deal with that by ourselves. Am I a burden to them? Cigar is right. We should get you back. Want to take longer? We have to pass near Midgar on our way to the mirror in any case. The place has been quiet lately. It would be easy to stay unnoticed there. The old hefted her axe and stepped to the car's bow, clearly intent on martial practice. Vanna shook her head and sat nearby, going through something in her bag. Then I'm setting course for Midgard. Ul frowned into concentration, his arms spread. Loki and Sigar went to the opposite ends of the Jakar, leaving her alone with the archer. Melody pondered leaving too, but somehow I feel so calm near him. They stood in silence on the deck of the best of ships, amidst an endless sea, and she wanted it to last forever. The archer sighed at her mischievously. What is it, Hucker? It's just... Can I ask all the questions? Uh, can I ask him, has he been there? How's he controlling the ship? I'm curious if he's been there. Of course, it was simple enough before Odin closed the Bifrost. As far as I know, all the Seer and Veneer visited Midgard at some point or other. Seer and Veneer. And some of the giants. Why didn't Odin close the bridge? I don't know. I was in Idalir then. I woke up one day and the bridge was no longer in the sky. He smirked. I remember thinking it was another prank of the great and terrible and hammer struck. 
But when several days had passed and the bridge still wasn't back, I got worried and went to Odin's Hall to ask around. Thor stopped me on... Oh, Lord. Velasco's doorstep? As I learned from him, it was Odin's edict. Why did he decide to close the Bifrost, I wonder? Most likely he heard of a prophecy that somebody was going to come and overthrow him and his bitch ass. <laughs> Too scared to face anything that will take his power away from him. Decided that uh, he wanted to close the Bifrost. That's, that's probably, um, and me being here, is probably the work of somebody trying to get his power away from him. And he mad about it, so he wanted to kill me before I reached my full potential. I don't know what I'm saying. Like people like him and Zeus are always afraid of losing their power. It's ridiculous. Selfishly. <laughs> it's like... Oh, cocked his head. Skittable in the air always has a fair wind blowing for it. All I have to do is think of the direction to our destination. Sounds easy enough. So it is. So anyone can run this ship? Ull laughed softly. I don't think so. And what's up with you and your stepfather? There clearly isn't love lost between the two of you. Should there be? I'm not of his blood and he never tired of rubbing it in my face. Being a stepson isn't the best experience and having the Odinson, having the Odin son as your stepfather is even worse. I'm confused. Store is your stepfather and Odin's son? Oh, not it. That's right. On the bright side, we don't have as many arguments anymore. The lack of communication tends to help with that. The archer's face fell. What happened? Oh shook his head. Is it? Oh, that is romantic music. Okay. Saying goodbye is tough. You in particular. He looked at her for a long moment, searching her face as if trying to commit every feature to memory. He wasn't undressing her with his eyes, but Melody felt completely naked. However, she did not feel like running or hiding. So weird. I think this is the first time he's looked at me this long. What is he trying to see? I wish you stayed, but asking you, asking you to would be unfair. Yeah, it would. He turned to look at the water. Ull appreciates your words. In any case, I'm glad I met you, Valkyrie. Leo waved at her, uh, grabbing her attention. Melody, want to practice? That was a really short diamond scene. I hope it wasn't too expensive, originally. The giantess glowed with enthusiasm. On the one hand, this won't be of any use in Midgard. On the other, it's not like I have anything else to do. Was well, the next time I get to train with the giantess? She nodded and stepped closer. Get your sword out. I teach you a few tricks. Well, not teach me the basics. The giantess harumphed, but didn't object. Then get the armor, too. I'm ready. Leo walked around her and smiled at something. Let's see. She faced Melody. The easiest first, try to find an opening and strike there. And try doing it so that I don't hit you back. Sounds easy. Too easy. Leo stood in front of her, smiling, act slightly raised. I'll hit her shoulder. She'll need time to raise the axe. Melody stepped diagonally and struck. Leo swayed slightly and the sword swung past. Hey, what, you think your foe would just stand there waiting to be cut? Try again, make an effort. Melody found and struck again. Leo parried this time. The sword rang as it struck the ax. Now I'll duck. Melody made another step. Leo smirked and her fist swung upwards aiming for Melody's jaw. Melody jumped back. That's not fair. <laughs> it's a fight. You should, well, you, why? You should remember how it's done. Watch. The giantess slowly and smoothly demonstrated the move. She moves beautifully. Watch the movement. Watch Leod. Uh, 
Um, I feel like this is one of those things like um, when Masamune was training us, he did movements that were like a faint, but his eyes just for a second um, looked at his true target. And I feel like the movement is mesmerizing on purpose. And you're supposed to get caught up in that, but really you should watch her, I think. I'm grasping at straws, people. Instead of trying to learn, Melody was unwillingly drawn to Leo's figure. Okay. I didn't realize it was romantic. I, like, I, I thought we were fighting, okay? <laughs> Leo likes your attention. Oh, I'm not trying to, uh, goodness. Okay, well, I'll fix that later. I've seen her fight, but she looks different than more furious. Now it's like she's dancing. Of course, the armor covered most of her rolling muscles, but whatever was on display was more than enough. She has to make an effort to avoid staring too overtly. Her gaze, however, did not go unnoticed, judging by Leo's sly look. Goodness. I'm gonna get between the step siblings. <laughs> the water overboard changed its color and the air grew warmer. Um, Ulda yielded the ship to the cigar and stretched on the deck, letting the sun shine on his face. A shoal of shining silver fish swam close to the surface. Melody walked in circles along the ship. It was hard to admit that her return home was scaring her. Can't stay in place? Melody nodded. Let's catch some fish. Cigar harumphed. Why? We have no supplies. Well, there's a bit less of that now. He already half hung over the water with a piece of flatbread in his hand. No way you're catching anything like that. Loki didn't listen and tossed the flatbread into the water. Melody followed it with her gaze. Something tells me it would have been better to eat that. My point exactly. Water bubbled where the flatbread hit it. Large bubbles rose one after another and popped, leaving a sulfurous smell behind. What's that? An underwater volcano? Loki paled slightly. Let's move around it. It looked like a geyser exploded at starboard. You guys remember what side of starboard was? Back from the cells in the fog days? I don't remember that. I hope they don't ask me to. Have heavy droplets of water drummed on the deck and those standing on it. Skidlinear arose on a wave and fell back down. Uh, have we been caught? Her feet left the deck. Um, grab a rope. Everything on the deck flew up into the air, including the end of a thick hemp rope. Melody barely managed to extend a hand and grab it. The wave dragged sk Skid Lanier back, back down. She realized that grabbing the rope wasn't the brightest idea when it went slack and the boards of the deck were suddenly up in her face. Uh, damn it. <laughs> I'm making all the wrong choices, dude. Melody got slammed shoulder first into the wet deck. And this one, this this um, story is really hard to protect. <laughs> the wet deck and slid along it all the way down to the board. Skip and air drifted. The waves calmed and Melody and Nelly noticed that the giant head of a serpent uh, occluded the sky with its bulk. A surprisingly sentient eye looked directly at Skip and air. Oh my word. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, an incredibly long tongue snaked out of a gargantuan maw. A quiet hissing followed. Hey, Jory, you grew so big. Are you eating well? The serpent nodded. Jory? Is that your pet? No, his, his name is uh, Jormunger jo jo something like that. Is that your pet? And they call it like the, is this like the, the world serpent, I think? Something like that. I can't, I can't remember all the detail. <laughs> and I should, I just finished watching, uh, what's that shit? Uh, God of War? <laughs> like the, the la latest uh, one. Because the first one was about the Greek god. Well, the first three, and, and then the spinoffs were about the Greek gods, and then the, the last one was about the Norse gods. Anyway. Look, Loki looked at her with such shock that she might have felt, have felt embarrassed had her attention not been captured by the enormous serpent in the sky. This is his son. His son! Okay. 
Loki's son. That I did not know. Jormungandr. Jormungandr. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I should. But I was right about it being the world serpent. Okay, sorry. The herbalist's stony face held no emotions. Uh oh. Melody shivered, either because of the water or because of the sheer absurdity of the situation. But how? How else will mommy and daddy love each other very much? His smile was a bit crooked. So this is literally your son? Well, yes. Unfucking believable. <laughs> Loki stepped to the board and leaned against it. Joy, be good, boy, and let us through. The serpent blinked slowly. S promised. Loki rubbed his forehead. About the troll? The serpent snorted. A noxious cloud escaped his maw, and a stunned seagull plopped onto the deck. That's a no? About the Holdra? Um. Heard it. How about the rogue and the king? Your favorite. Uh, Jormin and Gondor didn't like that I offer either. Um. Okay. Now that's just stupid. Who's gonna tell you the saga then? I wonder how long this negotiation will take. Oh, he wants to hear a story time from dad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I want to stand here while Loki goes through his back catalog. The looming head of the world serpent got on her nerves, but Melody stepped closer. I know a story you never heard before. Loki gave her a grateful look. The serpent cocked his head interested. Tells. Listen closely. On a faraway world once lived a little prince. He lived on a planet, a rock among the stars, that was barely larger than himself, and he really missed having a friend. Yorman Gondor um, listened very intently. He looks so human. And he's not exactly an adult. How long has he been in the sea? Melody finished her story. Serpent opened his maw in satisfaction. A good saga. He nodded and slowly began sinking. Yori, wait. What? Do me a favor. If you see Thor, keep him busy for me. Very well. I do know that he can hold his own against Thor. At least that's how it happened in the God of War video <laughs> game. He vanished under the surface, and the sea and the sea soon calmed. Uh, Ola looked a skid on a near over, eyed the sacks and bags floating around the ship, scowled, and shook his head. Why didn't you say we'd run into uh, Jormungandr? I didn't think he'd grow this big. He'll soon have to spiral around. So is this before? He's still he's still really young then right now. Interesting. So this is an interesting part. It kind of tells me a little bit more about the timeline. Melody saw her bag of clothes floating overboard and signed his appointment. She used her sword to hook it and fished it out of the water. Naturally, his contents were soaked. I'm all wet and I don't even have any spare clothes. I can dry it out, but the salt won't go anywhere. You'll get a cold. Oh, really? She sneezed. Want me to help with your clothes, love? So you can burn them? <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> your magic is all over the place. I'll make do, thanks. I may have something. He handed her his bag. Thanks. Pants and cape. A hunter outfit. Ooh. Or tunic. <laughs> just take just take one of his uh his shirts and then use it as a dress. I wonder are the are the um outfits different if you're dating someone else? Let me know. Or is he always the one to offer you the outfit? 
regardless if you're dating him or not. How come your stuff is dry? Both strings don't like being damned, so I enchanted my bag. He fished out the rest of the supplies and concentrated, sending Skid Blanier on his way. They saw Lena, the sun was starting to set. Melody watched it approach with mounting trepidation. Soon, all this will be over. Is it really, though? Like, think about it. At this point, things are already set into motion. And if they can just, this quite simply, get to Midgard, there must be other ways to get to Midgard as well, even if the Bifrost is broken. Because I'm sure Odin's powerful enough to create a way. He could just reforge the fucking Bifrost or whatever have you. So well, who's to say that um, he wouldn't come after her anyway and then she won't have her friends there to back her up? Just a bunch of dumb humans. <laughs> I mean me. Loki leaning against the rail next to her. Coin for your thoughts? Um. How come you have a serpent for a son? Whoa, his mother. Ingraboda is of giant blood. I'm gonna write that down too. Leota's a giantess too, and Snare and his daughter. None of them looks like a snake. Nella does Ingraboda. He pushed away from the board and smiled. Prepare to disembark, Melody. So what happened? Beyond the forest of sparse, uh, sparse pines growing out of gray, large grain sand, a wall of mist shifted and shimmered in the dust light. Is that supposed to be there? No, it's not. Archer carefully stepped closer and put a hand up to the wall. And? It's not letting me through. Melody felt a weird chill. What does he mean? She went to the wall and touched it too. A wave of cold ran down her arm. She winced and pressed harder. Her tattoo flared as if hit by a searchlight from within, but the glow quickly subsided. Um, I think you just told him where you were. Magic. It won't let me through. Do something. Why? Why? What happened to Earth? Where'd the wall come from? I'm pretty sure Earth is still on the other side of it. Look at the wall for a bit and then shook his head. Well, judging from his size, look in general style. Odin really doesn't want you to turn, turn, turning to Midgard. I don't understand. What does this do for him? Cigar shook his head. First, he didn't want you to come. Now that you're here, he doesn't want you to leave. Distraught. Apparently, we'll have to ask Vermeer about that. Felt a wave of annoyance mixed with disappointment. I need to think. Melody walked along the shore aimlessly. The pines moved their branches compassionately, but she didn't pay them any attention. Looks like I'll have to start all over again. What does that mean? She sat on the sand and looked at the starry sky. I didn't want the adventure to stop. Why am I so bitter then? What the hell? I can kind of understand. It's like you wanted to keep going because you discovered this fantastical, you know, thing happening to you. Um, and it's exciting and you like your friends that you just met, um, but at the same time, someone is manipulating and dictating how your life is going right now and you don't have any answers as to why or how fully. Um, and it's just the fact that they're taking their cho your choices away from you, um, even if you didn't want to go through with that choice to begin with. <laughs> She cupped her hands and cradled her head. The pines kept her silence. She heard the rustle of sand under someone's feet. Who's there? The rustle stopped. She could see a figure in the earth and see a figure in the uncertain dust shadows. How are you, Valkyrie? Not good. And I'm not a Valkyrie, I told you before. Did you? I think you have every trait a beautiful warrior maiden needs. And what's that? He smirked and sat in front of her. Let me tell you what I see. 
I see you as strong-willed, free-minded, proud and ready to fight, and walk to uh, walk the road to its end. I'm sorry, this the scenery is really pretty. I gotta get a picture. Melody felt herself blush. Beautiful as a snow-covered forest, as a dew of, as a drop of dew on new needle. The archer tugged at one of his braids, embarrassed. It sounded better before I tried to say it out loud. <laughs> Melody lay on her back and looked at the starry sky. Ulf st uh, stirred and, and she saw, out of the corner of her eye, him settling down near her. I'm glad you'll stay with us a little while longer. His voice was very quiet. Oh, that was cute. It's like the moments, they go by so fast, though. <laughs> the small campfire almost burned through, but there was enough light to see that. But there are quite a few of them, actually. They've been sprinkling a lot of, like, little romantic moments, like, suddenly. <laughs> Well, it, it doesn't necessarily s sudden, I guess. We're kind of like teasing up to it so far. Um, enough light to see by. The charm woven wall gave enough light to transform the darkness into a deep twilight. Melody couldn't stop looking at it. Everyone's asleep except for Cigar. Why can't I sleep either? Herbalist sat with his back to the campfire and looked out into the night. A sudden gust of wind tossed his hair and brought the distant sound of a horn. Ul jumped up and looked around frantically. Cigar, you heard that too? I did. He rose in one motion. Wake up. The wild hunt is coming. The who what what? Heavy clouds lit from within covered the sky. The air quickly grew colder. What's that? Later, we've got to leave. Now. He shook Loki. Wake up, Danny. What? The herbalist pointed at the sky. Right. We're not escaping that. I could. There she is, finally! <laughs> I could. Ola shivered and looked up. It's too late. Oh, Lord. Oh, there's Thor. Oh no! I didn't get a good picture of that. I know what to do. No, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna replay that. I'll be ready next time. <laughs> was there one more episode? I feel like there was. Let me check. Okay, so that one went by pretty fast. So I'm feeling pretty good about doing the third one, I think. I don't know. They say you can't escape the wild hunt. I still don't understand what the wild hunt is, but um, Thor has found us again. So, yeah. Let's just find out. Oh my goodness. What in the heck? What did he bring with him? The wild hunt. The night quickly lost his calm and became dark and stormy. Vicious gust of frigid wind brought with them a howling, raging horde with Thor at its head. Sagir uh, yelled something, but his voice was lost in the tum tumult. Venetus pressed her palms to her ears as if trying to muffle the warrior's cries. Tears flowed from her tightly shut eyes. What's going on? She noticed Loki's pale face as he squeezed the handle of the knife on his belt. Don't look at them. They will drag you off. Okay. So don't look into their eyes. The old tense menacingly, axe twitching in her hand, eyes glued to Thor. Ol pressed his lips together and Melody could swear she never saw that expression on his face. Her composure cracked. What's wrong with you? Um, do something? The herbalist glanced at her and turned away. There's nothing we can do now. The words radiate a sense of doom. Why? Another gust of wind sends shivers down her spine. Venice whispers something and half fell into the sea and eyes still shut. What is going on? Like, zero, yeah. What is going on? What is the wild hunt? If you look at them, they'll drag you off, but apparently we're screwed either way. The almost palpable sense of wrongness radiating from their approaching army scared her. Her companions and actions scared her even more. 
She felt as if she had a needle stuck between her shoulder blades. A tide of burning cold welled in her t- chest. That hurts. The ghostly host surrounded them and started to shrink the circle. The burning flowed from her chest to her arm to Odin's mark. Melody grabbed at her wrist and hissed in pain. What's happening to me? Love? A thin ray of cold light ran along the marking. A faint glimmer reflected on the sand, forming a circle around her. Sigar gasped and dragged Ola and Leod inside the forming contour. The line flared and closed, cutting them away from the army and Thor. Melody sobbed. Her head swam and she could barely stand. Oh, poor thing. Leod extended a hand, letting Melody lean on her. All sounds receded as if muffled by a thick layer of cotton wool. I don't feel so good. Um, faint, hold on, or breathe. Hold on? I'm not dying here. It felt like anger gave her strength. Her head cleared and Melody sighed in relief. The ghostly army crowded on the edge of the circles, trying to get in. Thor stepped down from his chariot and waved an imperious hand, causing the spirits to part for him. Leo kept watching him with a furious gaze. Hello again, Balance Breaker. Lucky, you're making me chase you again. You know, I have a name too. You could try learning what it is, not just calling me Balance Breaker, especially when you don't explain what that is. Just saying. You know, because I kind of hate that, like a lot. So I'm hating you by the, more about the second. <laughs> As you can see, the all does not want you in the balance breaker escaping. You just, like, it's like I'm an object or something. It's like... He gestured around him. He even trusted me with the wild hunt. I don't like where this is going. And what does Loki have to do with it? It's like a bad smell I can't get rid of. Thor scoffed, mildly confused. What a bold Valkyrie. Loki gave a uh, Loki gave her a worried glance. Love, I don't like him either, but maybe he clearly wants something from us since he got so far. Exactly, and I wanted to bargain for it. No need. I'll get what I came for anyway. Thor walked around the circle, cocked his head inquisitively, and appeared to think about something. Loki elbowed a quiet ol into in the ribs and leaned into his ear. Watch this. He's gonna have smoke pouring out of his ears any moment now. This is not the time for jokes. Vendors opened her eyes and gasped, looking disbelievingly at the circle and the army that crowded its exterior. How? Thor nodded to himself and stood in front of them. The all felt attached me with bringing uh, in you, Loki, and the girl, unharmed if possible. You, Loki, and the girl. Vanitas too? What does Vanitas have to do with it? So now there's three of us. He glanced at Ole. I don't need the rest of you. I don't think you'll see each other again, so I'm giving you time to say your goodbyes. Lightning toward the sky as Sundry hit a pine which promptly caught fire. You have time while the tree burns. He went back to his chariot and ghostly and and the ghostly host closed its ranks behind him. Loki moved an eyebrow and the fire on the pine slowed down. Yeah, your mistakes are really coming back to bite us all in the ass, aren't they, Cigar? What? Cigar cradled his head in his arms, sitting on the sand. Think of something else. His mistake? Why do people keep talking about his mistakes? His voice sounded hollow. Like this amazing ghost war that should not be here? The giantess relaxed slightly, but kept watching Thor. I don't know which question I want. I want to know more. People keep people keep bringing up his mistakes. I doubt I'm gonna get a full answer right now, though. Anyway, so maybe I should just ask about the ghost ward. Well, I guess the ghost ward is what I have put on the floor, so I could ask about my powers or cigars past. Um, I 
I don't know, guys. Um, <sighs> what do I want to know more? I doubt I'm if we get a full answer to this, though. And they they don't have an answer to this to give me. They have this answer, but they won't give it to me. They don't have this answer at all, so I won't get it. <sighs> um, listen, I wanted to think about something else. I mean, I'm not trying to dig into his past, but if, if his past is re affecting me now, I might need to know. But I don't think this is the time to get into it, so how about we focus on this ghost word? And how can I make this stronger? Or maybe even attack the people? The circle that's keeping the wild hunt out. What about it? That music just changed abruptly. Loki looked at her curiously. Pay attention, love. He started pacing, counting on his fingers for emphasis. First, you come to Asgard, and not in any simple way, but straight into my wonderful godly body. Then, Hugin and Meenan find us, and you somehow get Odin's mark. Then, Gungnir flies at you, but you go poof and vanish to Jotunheim instead of dying on the spot. What are you getting at? I didn't draw that circle. Now that it's Sigar, nor Ul, Leod, or Vanitas. Melody remembers us, um, snares, a strange words in the ice statue garden. A bad feeling settled, settled in her chest. You did that. She just realized that? What did she think was happening with her hand? Why did she think she was hurting? Like, <laughs> but she looks so adorably confused. I can't even be that mad at her. <laughs> That's good. I always wanted superpowers. Enjoy it while it lasts. While it lasts? He didn't answer. Pretend to be preoccupied with the burning pine. I told you, they never give me full answers. It's like... <laughs> Which is really annoying. <laughs> like, it, it gets more and more annoying as you go. It's like, they expect me to be fully open with them and that they never share shit, you know. <laughs> that was weird. Melody focused on herself. So I don't feel good because of my powers? She scoffed inwardly. I wish I knew exactly what I could do. So I looked at the tree and winced. Pine's about to go out. Thor would take you to Odin and we'll be taken by the wild hunt. Then why didn't he already do that? Like, why give us time to say goodbye? Like, was he really just waiting for this ward to, um, to run out? Well, no, I guess he's just waiting us out, I suppose. But, I mean, we don't have to come out right now. But, I mean, I suppose we'll come out eventually because we'll get hungry. But why does he think that'll happen, like, right after the trees finish burning? I... Thor said he wouldn't touch us. Okay, so Vanus is... Why do they want Vanus to... When did she become a part of this? Like... We kind of randomly found her, like, by accident. And suddenly she's tied up in the destiny as well? Even so, we can't give him the Valkyrie. Give? Am I a sack of potatoes or something? I was even acting like. <laughs> like I'm just some object or whatever and they can just talk around me, you know, as if I understand everything that's going on. Because <laughs> they all got the picture and I don't. And it's like, yeah, haha, it's funny. I I'm not that amused. <laughs> Ol raised his hands. I didn't mean to offend you. The giant just closed her eyes and thought, I know what I can do about Thor, but the wild hunt. How about, can you like start with telling me what the fuck it is? Like, are, can we not hurt them because they're already dead or like, give me some kind of clues. They're obviously ghosts because we have a ghost ward, but <laughs> nothing to be done for it. He smirked bitterly. How do you know? It's my greatest and most bitter mistake. I created it. Wait, you created the wild hunt? Is that what you're saying? Well, at least we get the answer about what the mistake is. Sort of. 
Then I shivered and looked down. Well. Okay. So he did create the wild hunt. What the wild hunt is, I'm still not certain. It involves ghost people. But Cigar created the wild hunt. Which, of course, Odin took and made his own. And decided to punish Cigar before it. And took all his, most of his power away. Because, you know, can't handle by making shit that's stronger than him, you know. Because he a pussy. I shouldn't say that. Wow. I should bleep that out. I'm probably not going to. So. <laughs> we need to decide how we're getting out of here. Maybe we could bargain with Thor. No. We should give up. You come up with a plan. Loki's plans are always half-baked. Always half-baked. Um, we're not going to give up. Um, my sister's still asking me questions. Uh, okay. <laughs> I need to contemplate both questions, actually. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm thinking we're probably going to have to bargain with him. Because I'm trying to remember that they, they, they placed... At least Frigg, in a mindset, in a, in a mindset that they're more antagonist than the enemy. The real enemy here is Odin, which I have no trouble thinking that because I hate him. Um, I hated him before the story even started. <laughs> but <laughs> um, let's see. I don't think we should deal with Loki coming up with the plan. Some of his plans, like, they they work, they just, they just need some... And if he had a plan, he would have thought of it already, because he... He usually does, if he has one. But even on look on his face was just like, oh, yeah, we're kind of done. Bargain. No chance, he's serious now. Okay, well. He sat down on the sand and propped his head with the hand... Prop his head with his hand. Here's the guard. You didn't leave a back door to the seat or something. Of course not. I made it well. I was planning to win. Against who? Against Odin? Oh, he attacked Odin. Oh, wow. If Freya hadn't taught Odin, it would have gone according to plan. What are you saying, Cigar? Freya wouldn't... You didn't know? I thought that was why you left her hall. Yeah, she um she taught him magic. And that's why he let know how to do a little bit of magic. He even turned and used some of his magic against Freya. Of course. Because, you know, fucking Odin. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about? We must get out of here. Scott, what prevents you from doing that said again? Another wild hunt? Isn't this one enough? Not really. I mean, we could just kind of invite some chaos and try to escape. But I don't know how that would work. I mean, do you have enough power to do that again? He excelled through gritted teeth. She's right, old pal. You're messed. You clean it up. I don't have enough power, even if I pour all of myself into the set. What is that? I'm gonna write it down. Then get someone to help you. If this is about pure magic. Did y'all hear that? Is somebody passing by? To <laughs> what was that noise? That was weird. I'm sorry. Okay. Leona is a giantess. She has bits of magic, but she's mostly in armor, right? Loki has chaos magic. He a backup plan. Ul is more of an archer. We haven't really seen him use a ton of magic. Um, I think more subtle magic than anything. He look, he can do some enchantments. He did say that. Um. But I think if we're going for pure magic, 
we're talking about Vanitas. And plus they work well together. They get on well. No, I can't. You can, you just look scared. I can only work with animals. I don't even remember where her powers are. The powers Cigar had were never something I could use. She smiled softly at the herbalist. Cigar hesitated. But you could learn it. Venice smiled again and shook her head. You're wasting precious time. How? How? Okay, I can't. I, I can't just guess here. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to guess, but I can't just uh, choose at random. I need to get this right, like right now. I feel like I only have one more chance uh, to choose. At least we narrowed it down to three. Okay, so it's not Vanitas. Let's re go through our choices. Did I say Loki was the backup? I did. Oh my God. Oh my God. We're talking about someone with pure power. He should be really strong. Loki should be. I don't even fully understand exactly what his magic is, but. You were bragging about your power, weren't you, Lucky? It's time to demonstrate it. No way. Why so choosy? I'd love to, but you have my ring. It won't be pleasant for either of us if I try anything on that scale. Was my finger hurting because he was using magic? Pine almost burned through. Vanda shivered. What should we do? Are you serious? I, I don't know. What are we trying to do? I don't even know what the fuck a set is. What type of magic is it? I can't. I, I don't freaking know. Wow, the story is hard. <laughs> I like it. I cannot figure, I, I cannot guess this one. I'm usually pretty good. I'm making all kinds of mistakes in the story. The story is hard. Um, well, at least for me, I, I, I can't guess. Cause the story is complex, dude. Uh, it's so much lore. I'm not trying to dog him out or nothing, but I feel like everybody has more magic than he does. I, I could try Leode. Watch it be all. Watch. We'll find out. Enchantments are not my suit. Oh, enchantments. Have they said that? I just said he did enchantments. <laughs> We totally screwed up. Okay, okay. Enough is enough. I know I can replay it later, but enough is enough. Let, let's at least go back and fix th this episode. I had a few missteps on last episode. Um, I missed a glory point, I think, with the frig thing somewhere, but it wasn't too bad. Wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, I did okay. Um, but on this one, definitely okay. So the last person I expected. Um, uh, had they said it was enchantments, I didn't understand what type of magic we were talking about. The archer nodded pensively. I don't know what this said, but I can share my power. I use your power. Oh, it's dangerous. I have to do it on blood, and the place is not right. Neither is the time. We'll put a hand on his shoulder. I trust you. You could die. We all could die if anything goes wrong. Then you'll do everything correctly. You decided quickly. <laughs> sure I did. Then it's settled. A brave ul will help to uh, sour his veneer in all nine of the realms. 
So, which one of the... Who are Veneers and who are... So, Cigar is a Veneer. And they said Thor wasn't a Seer. I forgot what the difference is. Ow! Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, my goodness. The baby is just going off right now. <laughs> um, I'm a seer. In all the nine realms, Leo ran her thumb along the edge of her axe. Then I'll deal with Thor. She's so keen. What about his hammer? Last time he threw it at Loki, and Leo's still lost. What if he won't fight you? I'll challenge him to home gang. He didn't kill Thread. Listen, you keep saying that. How do you know? Were you there? No. Then your only pr your only proof is Thor's word. Ull turned away and muttered something under his nose. Why are you even protecting him? I thought they went through this already. So the sim of the time. Trial by combat doesn't have to be to the death. So Sigar and Ul will do their magic. Leo will fight Thor. What about... Um... Yeah, what are you gonna do? I'll keep an eye on Thor so nobody gets killed. You'll keep an eye out. You'll have to help uh, Sigar and Ul. This discussion took time. The pine fell apart in a shower of sparks. The army beyond the circle swayed, letting Thor through. <laughs> I know you're probably like, what the hell are you bowing about? I'm telling you. It's like a punching bag. Oh, goodness. And right now she's like digging her little foot <laughs> into my belly. <laughs> your time is up. If you don't come out of your own accord, you have to mule near. I'll smash you out of the circle. Then why didn't you do that before? I'm really confused. If I made the circle, does it mean that I'm the one to remove it? Well, Loki leaned into her ear. Love, get the ward down. Uh, you gonna give me some instructions on how to do that? Should I focus on something? Just focus on getting the ward down. Anything of the above? You, you seem so smart and shit. Uh, how about you give some fucking instructions? Idiot. <laughs> Melody bit her lip nervously. Think about good things. Good things? Does anything good happen at all? I'm still alive, despite everything. And I have friends, even if they're weird. A slight smile touched her lips. I think that's a good thing, right? The circle in the sand flared and crumbled. The warriors of the wild hunt roared, but Thor stopped them with a wave of his hand. There we go. Will you come of your own accord or will I have to drag you? Wait. What do you want, a rematch? You think I just let Thread's murderer go? How many times do I have to repeat I did not murder her? Nobody believes you. Prove it. May Tyr judge us. Ooh, I remember that one, that god. He was like super powerful and like knowledgeable and crap. And then he went missing. Supposedly. That was also in the God of War. <laughs> God of War. Uh, actually, the whole like mystery of of them trying to get through stuff was uh had to deal with Tyr and all the stuff that he the secrets and stuff that he left behind that he was hiding, cause he hid away the the giants. Ooh, right. The giants really respected Tyr. Okay. <laughs> How am I? All of my knowledge base is off of God of War. <laughs> I have nothing to prove to you. He was visibly tempted. Home gang. Right here, right now, in the company of witnesses. A home gang is a challenge among equals. You're not my equal, Leo. You never were. You're just afraid Tyr won't take your side. Are you saying I'm a coward? I am! Leo put a hand on her hip and thrust her chin up. You won't admit to the crime and you won't accept my challenge. What else should I call you if not a coward? The first blow is mine. He hefted the hammer. I'm sorry if you don't survive it. Cowardice. 
Leo smiled in satisfaction. I, Leo, daughter of Hel Helogi, am challenging you, Thor Odin's son, to a trial by combat. May Tyr be our witness and judge. Um, is that Helogi her mom? Okay, Sif may be his mom. And Leo's mom could be Helogi. Oh, wait. Or Helogi could be her real dad. May Tyr be our witness and judge. I accept your challenge. Thor concentrated and turned to the army. Make some space. Watch them. Don't let them escape. Do not strike unless they strike first. Who's he talking to? I said the wild hunt. The wild hunt? Naturally. The wild hunt moved, clearing space for the duel, but keeping them surrounded on all sides. Leo ran a thumb along the axe again and walked to Thor. Vanners followed them and stopped near the chariots, trying not to look at the ghostly warriors. So going according to plan, well, trying to get bored without me. Melody watched them go. I hope Leo will win this time. Uh, I still don't think so, but... Sagar and Ul uh, stood facing each other. Melody, can you make the circle again? I can try. She frowned, trying to call up the sense of terror she felt before. A small frisson ran along her arm, but nothing happened. Like, what they expect? <laughs> Why would I be able to just call this shit up at will? Like, <laughs> Okay, Tim. Earl smiled encouragingly. Don't push yourself. We'll have to make do. He handed her several vials and a suspicious bundle of herbs. What's this? Insurance. I have a hard time. So will Ul. At least Ul is only half a seer, like Thor. So Thor is half a seer. He shook his head, chasing away all wanted thoughts. If I lose consciousness, pour the blue vial down my throat. <laughs> so many notes! <laughs> Damn it! Lose conscious blue. I'm write that in caps. If anything happens to Ul, give me the green vial. Okay. Hunter, green vial. Melody ran her fingers along the glass surfaces. What's the black one for? That one is for you. You're from Midgard, after all. If you feel ill while I'm busy, drink from it. Black is for me. Okay, I can remember that. He frowned in concentration. The wild hunt might go violent. Do not talk to them and do not look them in the eye. Better yet, keep your eyes on the ground. Well, well then how am I supposed to know what's happening with you guys? What are the herbs for? Burn them on my funeral pyre. If there will be anyone left to light it, uh, dude, don't die. He took a knife, a small bowl, and turned to Ul. S a cigar sang in a low voice, almost whispering. He ran the blade across his palm, gathered the welling blood in his cupped hand, and poured it into the bowl. Ul offered his hand, and his blood poured into the bowl as well. The spirits of the wild hunt swayed restlessly. Step by step, they were coming closer. Mjolnir flew past and struck the wall, separating them from Midgard. What's happening there? Focus. I promise to help Cigar. She bit her lip and stared at the two motionless figures in front of her, trying to ignore the sound of electricity crackling behind her. Cigar kept singing and blue smoke started coming out of the bowl. The wild hunt shuddered as if it were a single organism. Something flashed behind Melody and a peal of thunder made her jump, but she stubbornly kept her watching the witcheral. Thin, all opalescent threads uh, connected the spirits like a web and led to a single point. A pale cigar and his bowl. Only if he loses consciousness. The wild hunt did not like it. One after the other, the warrior spirits came closer. 
With low, menacing roars, the dead stretched their hands towards Sakaar. Whatever he was doing, the spirits were willing to disobey Thor to stop it. Ooh, I choose between my magic and the sword? Uh, I want to learn about my magic. Can I do it? Try. Melody desperately tried to call that strange power. I did it once. I held the wild hunt at bay. Come on, please. A whisper burned into her ears like a catchy melody. Melody. Nighting. What does that mean? Irrelevant. Come on, superpower. Come on. Um, I don't think it's irrelevant. She squeezed her fists until they hurt. A thin line of light flickered for a second and immediately vanished. Damn it. Herbalist swayed and dipped his hand to the bowl. Melody expected his fingers to be stained with blood, but they came away tinged with blue. He ran a finger over Ul's forehead, drawing a complex symbol. The archer shivered and the mark glowed. Okay, got it. The threads picked up color and grew taut. With a quiet twang, they converged on Ul and connected to the symbol on his forehead. The air suddenly grew so cold that a sheet of ice formed on the sand. The wild hunt stopped moving. Damn it. Melody swayed. The ritual was affecting her, too. She felt that a thread was coalescing between her and the wild hunt, binding her to it. Which potion was it? If I'm in trouble, black. Melody uncooked her by touch. This better work. Her head swam, but she managed to stay upright. The potion had practically no taste. Her consciousness cleared and Melody immediately felt more confident. The threads throbbed and grew brighter and brighter. You've managed. Cigar hummed the last note. Ula answered him. The threads flashed brightly before disappearing. The warriors of the wild hunt kneeled before their new master. Cigar did it. A couple of goats ran past them with loud bleeding. Uh, what? A little earlier. Vanis carefully approached the chariot that... Who and who? Alright. Tan and Tan were hitched to. She tried not to look at the ghostly warriors, fearing she'd see a familiar face. So many died then. How many of them did Cigar deprive of passage? Oh, he took them... Oh, he took them and they weren't able to pass on. And he just kind of enslaved them. And the memories of those days tried to resurface and she clenched her hands tighter. I can't believe Freya helped Odin. A gust of freezing wind sent, uh, sent a shiver down her spine and ruffled her golden hair. The state has begun. Thor and Leod's battle did not interest her. She had little experience with battle and considered it highly vulgar. All I have to do is wait for the right moment. Tam looked her over balefully. The air smelled of rainstorms. Venice lost herself in her thoughts and missed the moment Loki approached. What are you waiting for, Birch Girl? You did such a great job folding crowds of suitors and now you can't handle two goats? Waiting, perfectly able to handle the goats. I'm afraid that good tan, the good tan and tan don't like birches. The tar is bitter and it's hard to develop a taste for it. Vanna shook her head. It's all about hitting where it hurts. If you stayed out of my business, none of this would have happened. But you simply can't walk past, can you? You just have to turn everything upside down. Throw the world into chaos. What would you be doing had I not interfered? Living her fucking life in peace? Venice just at the goat's muzzles, catching their attention and making them stand still. Undoing their harnesses wasn't difficult. She could, of course, destroy the bridles, but she didn't like breaking things. I'd be living in peace in Dag Run. Had you wanted to live the way you did, you wouldn't have left yourself that back door. Admit it, you were thinking of running from the Snake Witch, too. Lightning struck the chariot, shattering it to pieces. Splinters flew everywhere, and a good number of them stunned the goat's posteriors. Aw, poor things. The goat's buck, breaking whatever was left of the chariot, and ran heatless through the throng of spirits. 
Loki appeared right after the goats, looking dumbstruck. He glanced at her and the unconscious a cigar, hosted the herbalist over his shoulder and started dragging him. Another peal of thunder, the bright flash of a lightning bolt. Sand and small debris flew into her eyes. Melody turned around. The giantess dodged the lightning bolt, but the next one. The deafening crack, the arc of electricity threw her away from a raging Thor. Loki. Go, go, go. I think you can see again. He yanked Ola with his free hand. Oh, do something. Archer moaned and wiped a symbol off of his forehead. The wild hunt swayed and turned to the source of the lightning. Thor. What's with Leod? We're about to find out. Wasn't he supposed to keep an eye on the duel? Yeah, but you couldn't do that. <laughs> Never where the fuck he's supposed to be. Just over there talking shit to Vanitas. <laughs> it's like, okay. Okay. <laughs> He get on my nerves. I'm not gonna lie. He get on my nerves. The ghosts of the wild hunt obeyed Ul's gesture. They howled, throwing themselves at Thor. My bitch. Thor waded straight into them. His tall figure could be seen through the translucent crowd, and spirits flew periodically out of the melee. The wild hunt coalesced around Thor, hindering his movements, grabbing at his arms and legs. A stun Leo sat out in the sand. Oh, damn. Ul sh uh, struggled to prop Leo up with her shoulder, helping her stand. Um, I'll help him find Vanitas. What is she doing? What? She'll be all right. Melody threw Leo's other arm over her shoulder. Ul nodded, thankful. She's heavy. Leo exhaled and put some weight on her legs. Quickly now. Venice, we're leaving. Melody noticed Venice among the wreckage of the chariot. She rose heavily and, limping, ran towards the others. Thor was fighting his way through the army of spirits, trying to stop their escape. Ul, skip, skip near. Don't rush me, it's not easy. Archer set Leo down into the sand and took out the bundle. Like, seriously, what are you doing, Loki, other than shouting at people to do things? <laughs> like, how would you come over here and take his place to help in Leo? They're like, what the fuck? A kill appeared before Ul and gradually sprouted the skeleton of the ship's flanks. Faster. Ul gritted his teeth, sending the wild hunt at Thor over and over again, and simultaneously trying to unfold the Drakkar. So not only is he sitting this this hunt at Thor, the supposedly uh, unbeatable hunt, uh, mind you, that they just gave up before, um, <laughs> and, uh, and he also has to get out of the ship as well. Um, can none of them control? Well, he said not not just anyone could do it, but like seriously, they put, they put a lot of pressure on your boy. I'm just telling you. The mass rose to the sky, the cell flapped, storm uh, clouds gathered over Thor, an ornate ladder unfurled towards them from a carved board. Loki, help me. They struggled to get Cigar and Leod on board. Vanus climbed by herself, even though each step made her wince. Ul spread his arms, filling the Drakkar's cell with wind. Come on, buddy. Fly like an arrow. His face pales, he was obviously barely hanging on. The Drakkar shuttled and moved, gliding away from the wall that separated the worlds. They heard Thor's fading yells. Liar! Mangy Kerr! What? Well, he's not the brightest star, but he's doing his best. The archer groaned as he collapsed onto the deck. Shut up, Loki. Just shut the fuck up. Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! Dude! Okay. Okay, so I've been recording for two hours. Uh... So I'm gonna try not to talk too long. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead in this part, but um, uh, okay, that, that's a lot of lore. There's a lot of mixed in family and Asiras and veneers and, and everything like that. I'm just trying to figure out how everybody's connected. Uh, what's going on here? What's going on with everybody else? What's going on with me? Um, Ul is still my favorite person and he was a total badass. 
in this last episode. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just saying. So we found out some interesting things about Cigar here. Uh, he was caused a lot of trouble uh, back in his heyday. And I wish I had been there to help him try to take down Odin because that would have been great. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know, just a lot. There's a lot of history with all of them. And uh, yeah, I'm going to punch Loki in the face one day, I swear. Anyway, <laughs> let me go ahead and end this part right here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and show the like button some love. Subscribe to see more content like this. And I will see you next time. Bye. Oh man, I missed a chance to let Vanvis turn Loki into a goat. Damn.